Okay, so in the last lecture, we learned that an active load would provide higher voltage gain than a resistive load. And so we have this MOS common source amplifier, and we noted that we would need to generate a bias voltage VB for the active current source load. So how do we generate VB? Well, we're going to use a replica bias. For a repli replica bias, we're going to generate a current somewhere on the chip. And then we're going to push the current into a diode connected load. The current flowing into that diode connected transistor should create a fairly stable VBE or VGS that we can use as a reference voltage. The reason for this is that VGS doesn't change very much with current, neither does VBE. So even if we have relatively big changes in the current that's biasing the transistor, the VBE and VGS will be very stable, at least relatively to other voltages that we can realize. So let's look, look at this in a schematic next. So here I have two cases, a diode-connected VJT and a diode-connected MOS. We can find the currents for these. The current flowing through the BJT is equal to VDD minus VDE divided by the reference resistor R. For the MOS device, the reason that VBE or VGS are at the bottom of the resistor is due to the diode connection. And one nice thing about the diode connected transistor is that it's always in forward active region if it's a BJT or saturation if it's a MOS. Now that we've created a relatively stable voltage, VBE and VGS, by running that current through those devices, let's see how we might use it. Here is a simple CMOS current mirror. We call it a current mirror because there is a mirror symmetry between the two devices in the circuit. And we note that the two devices have the same VGS. This is because the gates are connected together and the sources are at ground. So you'll notice on the left-hand side, we run a reference current through the MOS device. And because the two devices have the same gate to source voltage, then theoretically the current coming out of M2 should be also the same as the reference current. Now, generally for this to happen, we have to guarantee that we have at least an overdrive voltage across the MOS device. That means that, that the VDS has to be greater than the overdrive voltage for that MOS device. So we can say that I out is equal to I ref if VDS1 is equal to VDS2 or if lambda for the transistors is equal to zero. In other words, the output resistance of the devices is equal to zero. If that's the case, the currents are equal. Now we can write exact expressions for this. Here we can see that key piece of information. Lambda is equal to zero for the devices, or if the VDSs are equal, then the currents will be exactly equal. Now, if lambda isn't zero or VDSs aren't exactly equal, then the currents will vary slightly. Uh, but as long as the output resistance of the transistor is high, they'll be fairly similar. Now, another thing that we notice is that we might be able to scale the outputs because we have control over the geometry of the transistors. So we have two cases. We have a case where transistor M1 is equal to transistor M2. In other words, what we're saying is W over L1 is equal to W over L2. And if this is the case, then the output current is going to be equal to the reference current, again, assuming the same drain to source voltage or the same lambda condition. A second case we have is what if M2 were equal to N times M1? In other words, what if W over L1 was equal to N times W over L2? 
oh, sorry, w over l2 is equal to n times w over l1. In this case, the output current would be equal to n times the reference current. So this is a powerful statement because what this means is that we don't have to make the reference current the same size as the bias current that we're trying to generate. Now, the same is true for BJTs in a mirror connection. So a simple BJT current mirror. Something like this. Now, it's also true that we can connect more than one current source to this diode connected transistor. So we can generate multiple output currents using only one reference voltage generator. And we'll look at that in the next video.